All right, today we're going to go over making our first variables. Okay, so when you create a variable in Java, you have to declare it and then assign it a value. You can do that all at once, or you can declare it first and assign it later. Um, I'll show you using our Hello World program here as an example. I'm going to create a variable of type string. And we'll call it word. That's the name of the variable. The type is string. I'm going to make it equal to hello world. If I can spell. Okay. Now that is declaring it and assigning it all in one line. Okay. I could have done this. Declared it on one line and assign it on another. Um, and you'll see uh, later in the semester where that would be very valuable, the ability to do that, because you might not know what you need it to be equal to yet. You might need user input. But uh, for right now, I just wanted to show you that that can be done. Okay. Um, and I also want to show you that so if we wanted to have this variable print to the screen, we could take out our string literal here that we had in there and just put in our string variable right like that. This should compile, it does. And if we were to run it, we should get the same hello world print to the screen. Yeah. All good there. Okay, so the total process of declaring and assigning a variable is called initializing a variable. Okay, um, so string is one type of variable. There are a few others that you'll need to know for the AP test, uh, namely int, double, and boolean. And I'll just show you what that looks like here. So int is a um, variable of type integer that stores number between 2.1 billion negative and 2.1 billion positive. So it could be something like this, int num equals 1, and that would be declaring and assigning an integer. There's also type double, and that is very similar to an integer, but it can include decimal points. So you can do 1.5, something like that. Um, the third um, variable that I want you to know is of type Boolean. Okay, and we'll say Boolean x equals true. So type Boolean can either be true or false. It's one or the other. Okay. So those, um, I'm going to stop there for a second, because those these three variable types are what are called primitive variable types. What that means is they are predefined by the Java language and have, and thus have a limited amount of space set aside in memory for each variable. And basically that's why an int can only be between negative 2.1 billion and positive 2.1 billion. That's all the space that Java has set aside for that variable type. Um, so let's get to, you notice I did not highlight string here because a string is not a primitive type, it's a reference type. And basically when a string is created in Java, it's assigned a reference or an address on your computer's memory. And that basically points to where the variable is stored on your computer in memory. Uh, that allows the variable to be uh, of any size. You know, you could have a variable like we have here that says hello world, or it could be equal to a big paragraph of words. Um, it's, it's, 
It's not predefined, so you can make it as small or as large as you want it to. I'd also briefly mention that there are class variables and local variables, and it all depends where you declare the variable. Thus, if you declare a variable up under the class header here, that is a class variable, okay? Which means it can be used throughout the whole class. You know, this is a small class, so it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that. Uh, we only have one method. However, when you declare it down in the main method or any method, it is a local variable, okay? We'll discuss class and local variables more when we have our section on scope. But one special quality of class variables is that they are assigned default values. For instance, when you create a class variable and you don't assign it a value, by default, if it's type boolean, it's by default equal to false. If it's type int, by default it's equal to zero. And th same thing for double, it's equal to 0, 0.0. Like I said, we'll get into class and uh, local variables much more later, but I just wanted to point that out so you have a little basis for that. All right, so I'm, right now I'm going to introduce a math method to you called Randall. Okay, and that looks like this. Hold on one sec. All right, so you have this line here it says int in parentheses and then space another parentheses math.random so parentheses an asterisk two plus one that looks like a lot of craziness but we're not going to go into that in detail right now i feel like i've been saying that a lot during this video but i'm just giving you some things that we can use so we can start doing some basic programs when we have our lesson on math, we'll go into exactly what's happening here. But for right now, all you need to know is that this will produce a random number between two and one. Actually, not very useful. Change that to six. So now it's producing a number between six and one, okay? However, I would like to show you how we could also print this variable of type int by going right in here. I'm going to do a plus sign and two equals and inside there I'm just going to make a space so that when this prints to the screen that everything's not bunched together and the plus sign is connecting everything so the plus sign connects this word uh, string variable with this literal of a space and then we have another plus sign and we're going to connect our int variable called num Let's see if that compiles it does Let's see what that produces. Yeah, so hello world and our random number that came up was three, okay? Okay, so that's how that works, the connectors with the plus sign. Um, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna actually throw two more concepts at you. Um, one called the if else statement and paste in this. So this reads if num double equal one. So that means if num is equal to, and notice the double equal sign. If it was a single equal sign, we would actually be assigning num to be equal to one. So it's important that you remember you got to use a double equal sign. If num equals to one, then we're going to print out the word one, and just to be sure that came out right we'll put that out um, else actually say any other number right so let's see how that works run this and any other number because it wasn't equal to one right so this reads if num is equal to one, do this, else do this, okay? Now I'm going to show you one other thing in here, and that is the, so the, if you look at your, if you hold down the shift key, 
and you type the key that's right above your enter or return key, it gives you these two straight lines. In Java, those two straight lines um, signify or. And so we're going to say if num equal to one or two, then we'll type one or two, else any other number. Let's see how that works. We want to be four. See if we can get it to be one or two. There you go, one or two. Okay, so it's working. Um, I show you that because I'm now going to have you do an assignment that's going to have to make use of this if else and of this feature with or. And you could have more than you could have a third one in here, and you're going to need that for your homework. You know, um, equals three. Uh, you could have as many as you want in there. Okay. Um, you can also do this where you have that and then we could have another if so you could have if else if and then else so this could be if it was equal to four let's say then you would print out four right um, else any other number. So one, two, or three, that's going to come out here, right? Else if equal to four, it'll come out here. If it's five or six, it'll come out here. File, run. There you go. Came out to three, so it was the first one. So what I'm going to have you do, so for part of your assignment, and you can read this in the description as well, but what I want you to do is you're going to create a basic game of craps. Um, very basic. And we'll fine tune it as the semester goes along. But basically, you're going to test if you're going to make a number between 1 and 12, a random number. And you're going to test to see if 2, 3, or 12 comes out. Then you print it a screen, you, um, craps, you lose. If 7 or 11 comes out, um, you win. Anything else comes out, you print roll again to the screen. Okay? And I'm going to have that in the description so you can look down below to see if you forget that. All right, good luck, and uh, we'll test it tomorrow.